to watch the review. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Rostin's Reviews. My name is Mr. Rostin, Cluster 61 Social Studies teacher here at Broadview, and it's great to be back. It's great to be back. I'm happy to be here. Hope you all are doing well. I hope you all had a nice ride home. And uh, I see there's a couple of people in the chat. How's it going, everybody? Hope y'all are doing well. Hope you had a nice ride home today. All right, so week 19 in the books. We are right in the middle of our historical investigation number three. And of course, the question to HIQ number three is, were the Egyptian pharaohs wise investors or wasteful spenders? So my mic is on. Everybody's good. Let's jump right into it, shall we? All right, let's take a look here. So we're using blue class today. Big shouts to blue class. Um, you know, we had a good week. Let's take a look at the weekly overview and what we did this week in social studies. So on Monday, if my computer would ever load, there we go. We analyzed and drawed Drew, not draw, drew conclusions about the social classes of ancient Egypt. So the first thing we did for social classes was we talked about what a social class was. And what is a social class? Well, it's how a society groups their people, right? And we talked about how they could group them in a, ma in a majority, in a bunch of different ways. Man, you can tell that I am a little bit, I am a little Rusty, I apologize. So, first we talked about Broadview and how the different social classes are in Broadview. We have teachers and the, and the principal, Dr. Thomas, and the assistant principals, uh, Mrs. Rinaldi and Mrs. Prendergast, and we talked about the SRO and the secretaries and the teachers and the PPS staff and the cafeteria workers and the custodians and the students. And we put them in order and we said, of course, that Dr. Thomas is on the top. She's the educational leader. And then we talked about right underneath her is the assistant principals. We have Mrs. Rinaldi and Mrs. Prendergast. Underneath them is the student resource officer, Officer Hayes, and we put him in the third. Oh, that's nice. That's nice that you did this already, sorry. Um, then we have the secretaries, and we talked about how the secretaries run the school, right? They make sure that everybody is on time. They set everybody's schedule. Everybody's ready and raring to go. Then we got the teachers, the PPS staff, the guidance counselors, the social workers, the school psychologists. Hello, everyone. Howdy. Then we talked about the cafeteria workers, how they're super important because they feed you guys, right, every single day. Then we talked about the custodians, and then lastly, the students on the bottom. And we talked about why students should be actually on the top of the social class pyramid. And if you remember, students should be on the top because without the students, there is no school, right? There's no students here. I don't have anybody to teach. And the assistant principals and the principal don't have lessons to teach me in order to teach you better. So we talked about that and I wanted you to remember that because when we went over the Egypt social classes, it was super important. So what we did to learn about the social classes in ancient Egypt was we read the wedding bracelet. Now this is a story by Sandra Julian Barker. We talked about how this is a secondary source, right? We figured that out by previewing a source just like we do with all of our sources. We found the title, the author, there was no publishing date, but that's okay. And we talked about how we knew this was a secondary source because of the title and the author, right? And we talked about how there probably weren't very many Sandra Julian Barkers roaming around ancient Egypt. So we have our secondary source. We read about Azra the servant and his journey to becoming a, a servant in ancient Egypt for the Pharaoh Trinaka, right? We read and we analyzed and we annotated. So important. We highlighted our topic sentences in blue and our important information in orange. Okay, so we analyzed that. We then filled in our graphic organizer. 
We found some text evidence for each social class, and then we made an inference as to where they are on the social hierarchy. Then, last but not least, we created the social hierarchy for ancient Egypt. And why is this important? Because it helps us to figure out what life was like in ancient Egypt, and it'll help us to figure out whether or not the pharaohs were wise investors or wasteful spenders. So here is our social class pyramid for ancient Egypt. We have the pharaoh on the top. We know he's the king, he's the ruler. We have the vizier, the right-hand person, right? They're like the head advisor, right? And sometimes they can also be the high priest, you know, the head priest in charge. We then have the noblemen, and we remember noblemen are uh, usually relatives of the pharaoh. It's the brothers and the sisters and the cousins and the aunts and uncles, right? They're wealthy people who have influence and they advise the pharaoh. We then have scribes. Scribes, the educated folk, right? The ones who write down and take down all the records. We then have artisans, the creative people, the people who create things like jewelry, like statues, like monuments. The architects, too, right, who created the pyramids and uh, the temples that the pharaohs built. Then we have the servants and the peasants, right? And we talked about how peasants should really be on the top of the pyramid. And why is that? Because the peasants were the farmers. The peasants made all the food. No food equals no civilization. You can't live without food. So... We talked about how peasants should be on the top, just like students should be on the top of the BMS social class pyramid. Very interesting. Okay, so after social classes, and that took us two whole days, we learned about ancient Egypt religion. So we started off with these two very cringy, hysterical videos. Okay, they were hysterical. I love them. I think they're great. And we took down some notes for the I Notice and I Wonder chart. You guys came up with some great questions and great observations. Then we went into the Egyptian gods, right? And we know that when a civilization believes in multiple gods, they're polytheistic, right? Which means the belief in many gods. So we learned about the gods like Bas and Ra and Osiris. Um, we learned about Isis. Who else did we learn? Toth, um, just to name a few, right? So we did their name, their physical description, and what they're responsible for. As an exit slip, we learned about, we, we learned about, we created our own Egyptian gods. And let me tell you, I started grading some of these, and they are fantastic. You guys did a really, really good job, okay? We also gave you um, some extension activities that, you know, in case you got done early, you wanted to do. We had a puzzle where you had to figure out the names and you could create your own name in hieroglyphics and put it on there. And let me tell you, some of them are excellent. So what is the main takeaway from Egyptian religion? One, they're polytheistic. Two, religion is super important. Remember from the video when we learned about Ami and how he wrote his Book of the Dead to help him get to the afterlife. We know that getting to the afterlife is super important for Egyptians. So we know that religion is super important to not only the pharaohs and the wealthy people, but it's important to everybody. All right. Last but not least, we learned about how to make a mummy. Now, this is my favorite days of the year, right? We make mummies. We're cutting open bodies. We're taking out intestines. We're stuffing them with sawdust. We're going through the process. Now, you might be saying to yourself, yes, this was fun. But why do I need to know this? Because the process took a long time and it cost a lot of money. So we need to use that information to figure out whether this was a wise investment or wasteful spending. So we started off our day watching <laughs> the mummification wrap. Um, it was hysterical. Uh, I'll post a link to it later, you know, next week. Uh, so that way you guys can watch it if you want to watch it again and show your parents. I think it's hysterical. Mrs. Classy and Mrs. Donovan and I find these cringy videos humorous to no end. So we watch the videos, and then based on the videos, we created two questions um, about mummification. So what we're going to do next week after we finish our mummification, our second mummification lesson, is we're going to go back and answer the questions. Okay? So how to make a mummy. What did we do? 
Well, first, we made some inferences, right? We looked at the objects and the people who deal with the mummification process. We go through and we made some inferences. Remember, an inference is an educated guess. So you're using that background knowledge that you have. So all the things we've learned about ancient Egypt up, ancient Egypt, Egypt up until this point, you use your prior experiences, the stuff that you have just by being you, and you make an educated guess as to what the things were and what they were used for, right? So the first one was easy. We all know what the first one was. They were canopic jars, right? And we put the uh, different organs in there. I believe they put the small intestine or the intestines, the stomach, the liver, and there's something else that I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't remember. I apologize. It's been a long week. So we talked about canopic jars and how they're used. They store the organs of the mummy. So you went through, you answered all the inferences, and then you visited this website to Let's Make a Mummy, and you went through the mummification process. You mummified a pharaoh. Now the pharaoh was unnamed. Some of you were unhappy with that. For that, I apologize. Next mummy that we make, the noble person, you get a name. So there, whoop de doo All right, so. We went through the mummification process. We then revised our knowledge of what these items were or who they were and how they were used. So a big one that a lot of you guys didn't get um, was this right here, the linen, right? And they wrapped the mummy in the linen. Another one was these, was the amulets, right, that the person was, you, would use in the afterlife to get through uh, all those challenges and obstacles. We had some little discussion on this one, the Eye of Horus, right? And the Eye of Horus would be on the sarcophagus. Um, and it was there to help the mummy see to the outside world, okay? And I know that wasn't very clear, and for that I apologize. I'll make a note of it, and next year, maybe, uh, I'll fix it. We'll see. Hopefully, we'll fix it. Okay? So, that was what we did in social studies this week. Man, it was exciting. Man. All right, I'm going to flip back over to the big camera right here. Hold on a sec. Let me get back here. Oh, there I am. Hello, friends. It's nice to see you. All right. So, that was week 19 in social studies. What did we do? We worked on social classes, religion and mummification. All good stuff in social studies. Next week, what are we doing? Well, let me take out my trusty plan book here. We're doing another day of mummification, followed by we're going to explore King Tut's uh, tomb, which is going to be awesome. That's another good one. Then we're going to start digging into some primary and secondary sources to figure out whether or not the pharaohs were wise investors or wasteful spenders okay it was a great week in social studies we had a full week everybody was here for the most part we all did what we had to do we had some fun we had some laughs nobody cried overall positive experience you know positive positive all right so next week more looking into pharaohs and if they were wise investors and wasteful spenders uh and that's all i got for you this week you know, it was a good week. It's getting a little bit late. I need to get home to make sure I can pick up, you know, Andrew from the bus. And uh, that's it. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, and we'll see how the views are for this one. Because uh, as I told some of you earlier today, there hasn't been very much viewership uh, from all of you. And so, you know... It's one of those things where I do this extra, you know, I don't have to do it. Um, and you know, time is of the essence, if you will. So, you know, if we keep on having people watching it and it helps people out, I'll keep doing it. If, uh, you know, if it doesn't, then unfortunately we're gonna cut it short and uh, maybe we'll bring it back next year. We'll see, all right? All right, friends, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Take some time to recharge those batteries. Get to 110%. Do something fun this weekend, you know? Go outside. Go play. Go ride a bike. Ride a skateboard. Do whatever it is you people do when you're not with me. All right? 
I miss you guys. Hope you all have a great weekend. Be kind to one another. Peace be with you and with you. Rostin out.